Uh, from a vertical perspective, uh, we saw good growth in uh, retail and CPG, about 5.5% growth. Uh, we saw very good growth in telecom. Uh, banking and manufacturing was good. Uh, banking, if you ignore Finical, was over 3% growth. Insurance actually did well. The two areas where uh, we didn't do well, one was expected, which was energy, uh, which degrew. Uh, life sciences was a bit of a surprise for us. We didn't anticipate in the beginning of the quarter. Uh, but to some extent, uh, life sciences was also massively hit by the slowdown in the discretionary spend that we all talked about earlier in the consulting and package implementation. And life sciences bore the br brunt of it. Uh, so we hope that it's not a cyclical trend on the life sciences thing and it should recover over a period of time. Uh, barring energy, I think right now uh, we feel fairly confident about the uh, rest of the industries. Well, I think uh, while there's a lot of focus uh, this quarter on the revenue from the kind of questions, I would also like to highlight the margin part of it. So if you look at the operating margin for this quarter, uh, it's at 24.1%. And we did reasonably well on margin front. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, the Q1, typically it is we have compensation increases, which had an impact of 1.4%, and the visa charges, which is about 0.8%. But we were able to offset all that and uh, maintain the op operating margin at the same level as Q1 of last year through cost optimization measures. And many of the cost optimization measures, uh, whether it is utilization going up and the subcontractor expenses as a percentage revenue coming down, and uh, some of those factors you know, continue to happen in terms of which is positive. Uh, while uh, you asked the other question of the deal ramp up, uh, as you know, this quarter also we won a uh, little over uh, 800 million. Now, typically when we win a deal of a TCV, roughly about 7.5 to 10% of that TCV converts back to revenue in the first year. That's has been a thumb rule. Now, we expected certain the deals that we had won in the earlier uh, quarters to quickly ramp up in Q1, and some of them have, actually, and a couple of surprises were there which had got pushed back to the subsequent quarters. So that's the thing about the, uh, the conversion. Coming back to your question on pricing, you know, if you look at the in constant currency on year on year, the pricing drop has been pretty much 0.2%. So the same kind of pricing drop that we saw uh, has not been significantly different from what we saw earlier. And as we have said in the past, this pricing drop will continue to, we need to offset through the operation efficiency and productivity improvements in the company. And some of the trajectory that we have seen on utilization, subcon expenses, on-site employee cost as a percentage of revenue, we held at 39.3, which is same as last year. So some of these things, uh, we will offset the price uh, decline. And overall, I think on the margin front and the cash flow generation, it is 33% up as compared to Q1 of last year at uh, you know, little over 400 million. And uh, these are some of the factors which I would like to highlight in, in addition to the revenue part, where the trajectory that we had assumed uh, when we gave is in the right uh, uh, direction. Vishal, hi, this is Sajid here from Bloomberg Quaint. Uh, you gave a constant currency guidance of 10.5 uh, to 12%. Uh, can you elaborate on the dollar guidance because it was around 11.8 to 13.8. Uh, what will be uh, that dollar guidance now? Uh, secondly, uh, color on the kind of deals which are coming from European uh, Union or the Europe, Europe as a continent for you. Uh, will there be a hold up uh, with respect to those deals coming in? And how is the banking and financial vertical uh, work, uh, you know, doing for you in that sense? For Praveen, uh, the attrition rate has gone up to 21%. Uh, what's the reason for that uh, from 17 point something to nearly 21%? Uh, what is it uh, that, uh, you know, despite a good wage hike which you did, I think uh, still the attrition has gone up. And for Ranga, you know, uh, the EBITDA margins uh, has come down to 24.1%, as you said. Uh, is the street going to bring down you had given a band of EBITDA margin 26 to 28 now 24, the, to, 26. 24 to 26 do you think uh, you will remain at the lower end of the band or you have that percent potential to go up to 26 percent by the end of the year so so the uh, kinds of deals that that we have won are all over the uh, the world in all geographies uh, and especially and also in europe uh, so there is uh, in, in terms of the large deal wins there hasn't been a slowdown the, uh, so we are excited about that and we want to bring in the mix, the renew new mix uh, to these large deals as we start to execute on, um, on these. Um, in terms of the impact of Brexit on Europe and so forth, it is too early to tell. Clearly some of the banks are 
uh, are in a state of um, uh, trying to figure out what this means and uh, what are the kinds of uh, uh, changes that they will need to make and what that means for near-term spending and so forth. But the, uh, my sense is that uh, as unfortunate as some of these walls that are getting created because of things like Brexit uh, are, it does create more need for services, more need for integration, more need for uh, ways to interoperate across boundaries and so forth. So uh, in general, that would mean uh, additional opportunities for revenue growth. Um, uh, the, uh, but at the same time, in the near term, I think that uh, we might see some uncertainty due to this. The, uh, but it is too early to tell. So far, uh, I, can, I want to uh, clearly say that so far we have not seen any impact uh, um, as a result of Brexit. So, Vishal Sikha, who is talking about Brexit, is saying that Brexit's total impact or any impact as of now is not. But yes, over a period of time, how does it pan out, how does it have an impact, that will be seen. After that, the margins, they say that the two cash flows have improved, deal seizure and revenues have improved, but yes, it is slightly, the cost is big, and the dollar currency equation is headwind in front of the head, which is a little impact on the head, but otherwise, the company's margins situation in the last quarter, the deal revenues are much better on the head. We will talk about it, Gorang is also available to us. Gorang, the numbers of Infos have come, what do you think? The numbers and the guidance have come, you will revise the targets. Sir, you are saying that the numbers are not we have revised our targets in the first place. We will also give you the first disclosure that our buying rate is clear. This is the fact that the situation has changed so much in one time. We should have to move forward with a little bit. But the tipping management that was now doing and the results that TCS has come and the management that TCS has come and the management that TCS has come सूरत हाल आने वाले समय में शायद बेहतर के लिए सुधर सकते हैं ये अनिश्चितता ही बिल्कुल है कि ब्रेग्जिट को लेकर के यूरोजोन को लेकर के क्या नकारात्मक सा असर पड़ता है ये आने वाला समय ही बताएगा दूसरी एक लटकती तलवार पूरे आईटी सेक्टर पर है चुनाव जो प्रधान प्रेसिडेंट के होंगे अमेरिका में और वहाँ पर जो नुमाइंदे हैं उसमें से अगर एक नुमाइंदा डोनल्ड ट्रंप के रूप में चुन करके आए तो मेरे ख्याल से आई सेक्टर पर जो प्रोटेक्शनिज्म चल रहा है उसको लेकर के भी थोड़ी बहुत नकारात्मक परिस्थिति हो सकती है लेकिन ये सिर्फ आने वाले समय में हमें पता चलेगा राइट right.